Hey everybody, this is Kenny here, Triple Threat Western Radio, and I'm joined with a very talented team. They are known as the International Superstars. And let me make sure I get their names right. <laughs> uh, I have Dream Girl Ellie, and I have uh, Blanco Loco. Did I get that way? Perfect. Perfect. Yes, <laughs> so how are you two on uh, this particular day? How y'all doing? Sure, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> a little tired, you know, consistent traveling schedule, but, you know, no complaints. Awesome. That's that's good. Uh, at least you got working for the most part. So that's encouraging. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've been trying to get this interview to happen for a couple of weeks, and y'all are very busy, but I'm very fortunate <laughs> to have y'all both on because, you know, I see some interviews y'all get, and, you know, people get one of the two, and I got both. So that's <laughs> that's awesome. So I, yeah. I, I feel very um, honored to have both of the international superstars on this particular podcast. So um, before I get into the rest of the questions, this has been a question I've been asking every single wrestler since this pandemic has began. How is everything with you both as far as the, the quarantine, being away from the ring for a while, coming back house, everything in their forefront? Uh, I mean, it was definitely tough in the beginning. Um, you know, so much time away from wrestling and uh, trying to keep ourselves in shape because, you know, all the gym clothes and everything like that as well. Um, so we just went about it. We bought a home gym, um, kept ourselves, you know, in somewhat of a ring shape as, we, as best we could because no matter how much you work out or how much cardio you do, you know, being in the ring is a different monster than actually lifting weights and, you know, running in the street. Uh once things started to pick back up, though, I mean, they started, they, they really picked up, you know, I mean, it's, right now, we're literally on the road Thursday till Sunday, and then we have Monday, Tuesday home, and, you know, a little bit of Wednesday, and we're back on the road, so, I mean, no complaints there, and, you know, between um, working for WWE uh, regularly for the past couple of months, you know, they've really helped us out in regards to, you know, because this, this is all we do for a living, this, you know, wrestling's all we do, so. This is our main source of income. Um, so them helping us and booking us consistently and giving us opportunities, you know, that really helped us kind of get through the worst of the pandemic. That's encouraging to hear. And me and Ellie was talking a little bit about this before you joined the conversation. Talk about that NXT appearance she had a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Which was a, I think it was a battle royal to determine the number one contender for the NXT Women's Championship. Um, NXT, in particular, is doing amazing. Um, it just debuted like a, I guess a brand new, uh, upgrade place that they are calling home, uh, Capital Wrestling Center. Um, debuted at NXT Takeover this past Sunday. It looked amazing. They actually have fans in attendance, and then they had like virtual fans as well. So the atmosphere just took it up a notch. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, it was cool to see. And uh, so it it was a good show overall. Um, NXT they never let me down as a fan. I know people could be bickering and stuff like that. I'm not one of those people. At least I try not to. I just like watch the show, put the phone down, just try to be a fan. <laughs> that's that's yeah, how I try to do. Uh, so how did y'all became the international superstars? Talk like a little bit about the story behind how y'all came to be. Um. Well, I mean, I started training up in New York uh, at the age of sixteen. Um, I worked, I did a couple of schools up there, uh, eventually came down to Florida, found out that, uh, 
uh, promoters are not what they're supposed to be a lot of the time. <laughs> um, and, you know, my, myself, I wasn't really, you know, where I needed to be as a professional wrestler in regards to gear and my body and everything like that and my in-ring <laughs> ability as well. So took some time, um, got in the gym, started buying really nice gear, started, you know, going to training and everything like that. Uh, got the opportunity to train with Matt Seidel. Uh, then I had that opportunity to go and train with Off the Wild Samoan, um, as well as picking up some, you know, uh, what are those called? Seminars. Seminars, <laughs> yeah. Seminars with people like Robbie Brookside and uh, uh, Jack Swagger. We did the um, Samoan Dynasty. Samoan Dynasty one with Gangrel. Yeah, that had like Gangrel. Mm-hmm. Johnny Moss from NXT. Uh, Afan Sika, uh, Haku was there. It was just crazy. Um, so we just kind of, you know, I just kind of chose up my game, and then you know, I met one of my former partners who who, who we don't speak of anymore. Um, <laughs> and Afa was actually the one who gave us the name, the International Superstars. So we kind of just went on a rampage of you know taking bookings and traveling, you know, to all different states, and you know, went to the UK and worked over there as well. Um, and then Ellie just split it randomly. Oh, yeah. Ellie, Ellie split it before, you know, right, right around the time that we, we, we actually started traveling, traveling. Um, and she started doing the same thing. She started training with Appa. She started training with Matt Seidel. Um, she's probably done 28 states in the United States uh, wrestling. She's worked in the UK. Um, that's pretty much a long story short. Yeah, okay. that. <laughs> wow. I would definitely say y'all live up to the international part for sure. <laughs> We're on travel. Um, and I will definitely want to talk a little bit more over these seminars in particular because I really ask questions about seminars as far as wrestlers being there, learning from people in particular. You know, um, how would you describe the experience going to these seminars and and learning from from fellow peers, you know, and stuff like that. One thing I keep hearing from wrestlers is like, no matter if you're just getting started or you've been in a business for a very long time, you always can learn something new. Um, so how would you describe the experience being at the seminars and, and learning from peers like that? It, it, it's honestly, it's one of those things where you have to be careful what seminars you go to and what things you don't. Um, there's a lot of good seminars out there, and there's a lot of bad seminars. Uh, there's guys that do, doing it for money grabs that are kind of just going to let you go in there, do a five-minute match, do some warm-ups, and then turn around and tell you, oh, well, you know, work on your kicks and punches. That's what you need to work on, you know, and that's all they'll give you, and they'll give everybody the same exact, you know, roundabout answers. Um in regards to like some of the seminars that I've done, in regards to like Brookside, Brookside was a a, a wealth of knowledge. Um, you know, not even just in regards to British wrestling, but just you know how to conduct yourself in the business. Um, we did the uh, Matt Riddle and Tracy Smothers seminar when we were in New Orleans for WrestleMania. That was the again, it wasn't one of those you know oh show me what you can do and I get out of the ring. You know what I'm saying like Matt and Tracy are both, you know, vetted professionals who pride themselves on, you know, people learning from them any way they can. Uh, Bob Evans. Uh, I, that's, love, I, I love him. I love Brutal Bob <laughs> Evans. You know what I'm saying? Um, his seminar was actually the seminar that got me on the road. Um, before him, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I started getting good gear. I'd gotten in shape and everything like that. But I wasn't traveling because I was afraid to take those risks, you know. And I did his seminar when only, like, one of the person did it, you know, and it was like, why, why aren't you taking this opportunity? And ever since I did that seminar, you know, Uncle Bob has been the one that, you know, and he checks up on me too, you know, and he, he pushed me to, to take the next step. And that was probably, I honestly, like, no disrespect to any of the other seminars, but that was the one that kind of pushed me over to do more seminars and get on the road and travel more and, you know, broaden my horizons. Um, the Jack Swagger one, that was actually... It was, like, strangely, like... Not strangely, I guess. Just, it was super intriguing. Yeah. You know, because Jack had a lot of stories in regards to, you know, how he became a WWE superstar and then where he went after that and everything like that. And at the time, he hadn't been working for AEW. AEW wasn't even the thought process yet. I don't think... I mean, I, I think it was, been, like, but... in the talks. 
but it wasn't but like a thing. Yeah, it definitely wasn't a thing. I don't, I don't even think the casino battle. No, cause, no, the casino battle. No, it, was, it, had, it was way. Yeah. It was twenty eighteen. No, it was twenty seventeen. Pretty sure it was twenty seventeen. But you know, his experience and everything like that. You know, you learn, you learn what not to do and what to do. You know, in regards to that. So, I mean, again, again, like, if you're available to take, take a seminar from somebody that's actually done something in the business, you know what I'm saying. And that's not a knock on people that haven't been signed or anything like that. And I, I, I don't mean it that way. I mean it more about, you know, people that can actually give you valuable information to help you succeed in your dream. Um, then do it, you know, then definitely do it. Definitely agree. Um, Bob Evans, profound respect for him. Um, good wealth of knowledge. Uh, just a good dude. And that's pretty cool that even after the seminars, you know, y'all still connect. And, you know, he checks up on you and people that he, you know reach out to and stuff. So that's that's cool. You know, it's just a testament of the brotherhood and the sisterhood in this industry because wrestling can definitely be very cutthroat, and you know people want to step on each other's toes. So just to hear what y'all are saying, you know, that's that's very encouraging you know, for sure. Um, and that's one of the things I just like about wrestling too, honestly. I mean, in regards to all, you know, like you said, it's really cutthroat. It really shouldn't be, you know, uh, the, the biggest reason it shouldn't be is because think about this. If you were meant for a spot, then you would have had that spot. Yeah. Nobody can really take a spot that you're, you know, that, that you're that meant wasn't for. yours. You yeah. know, like a lot of people went off on a tirade, and, you know, talk crap about like, uh, James Ellsworth and how, you know, it was a wasted spot and it should have been their spot and this, that, and the third and all this other crap. And it's like, you know, let's let's be honest for a minute and call a spade a spade. Nobody else was getting that James Ellsworth spot because nobody that else was spot James was Ellsworth. Exactly. Nobody else was James Ellsworth. You know? And I mean I hope some people would hear this and they kinda, of, you know, get into your head, you know, into their head that, you know, hey, wrestling doesn't have to be cutthroat. You don't have to screw over the boys. To get a spot because guess what if it's meant for you you're gonna have that spot i promise you you know pretty much definitely agree um so you know pandemic has had an effect on a you know on everybody pretty much everybody not just wrestling but just everyone in general and obviously a lot of places have reopened by now and shows are back up and running and of course, things are a bit different now uh, with the whole mask mandate, social distancing, seats are separated. And now if you have had an opportunity, you know, to go to shows and see all these um, businesses unfold, um, you know, how, how do you feel about, you know, what wrestling has been looking like since y'all gotten back on the road and seeing the, you know, promotions won under these guidelines that we are in? Uh, well, to be honest with you, some promotions run with the guidelines and uh, a lot don't. Um, it just depends on what state you're in. <laughs> um, Tennessee is definitely one of the more lax um, when it comes to the uh, social distancing and everything like that. They also didn't have a lot of cases. Yeah. So I guess it just depends on, you know, how many cases, you know, the state had or whatever. But, I mean, they're, I mean, to be fair, they, they do take care of us. You know, they make sure that nobody, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Endangers? Yeah, nobody endangers us or anything like that. Yeah, you know. right. Okay, yeah, true. Um, um. I can say here in Kentucky, we ain't really got much happening except for one promotion. Uh, it's like the governor, with these numbers going up, it's like, it's an afterthought right now. Um, so me, I travel, I try to tra travel at least one show once in a while, and especially with people that I haven't seen before. Um, but at least, you know, some promotions I've taken it seriously, so. That's, that's definitely good to know. And with the shows y'all have, talk a little bit about the shows y'all have coming up um, individually and 
collectively, of course, um, what are some shows that your fans need to keep an eye on? Uh, well, every Thursday, every Thursday we're at one two seven in Grimsley, Tennessee. Uh, this Friday we're at Resolute in Crossville, Tennessee. Uh, on Saturday it's the debut of Flawless in Sevierville, Tennessee, and I will be at Wrestle America in Barnesville, Georgia on the tenth. And then normally, most Sundays you can find us at School of Morton, ran by Ricky Morton. In Chucky. In Chucky, right. in Chucky Tennessee. Awesome. So definitely keep an eye on all these shows. Support independent wrestling for sure. And uh, please be safe out there. You know, these promotions, more than others, are following the guidelines. So as long as the fans can do that, then these promotions can keep going while this pandemic is still ongoing. And let's talk about Flawless for a moment. I want to talk about the, the promo that Ellie did um, for morning, talk about her match. And then Blanco comes in saying, I'm going to be a part. And then Ellie's like, this is an all-woman show. So like, really? Yeah, okay. And then you, Ellie's talking again. And then you're like, I could be the referee. I could be the <laughs> That was quite a promo. That was quite a video. I was very intrigued. I'm like, man, let him in. Let him do something. Like, I get it to all women. You <laughs> convinced me to, to let Blanco be a part of the of the show. I Don't give him ideas. Because he <laughs> show up in a wig. Well, he, he, hey, people got to do what they got to do. Get face somehow. <laughs> That's right. And so, so Blanco, you all right with me, man. Like, you grind. Respect. Uh, oh, go ahead. And promote your social media links. Um, for, where can people, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, where can people catch y'all at? Oh gosh, okay, here we go. My Instagram is this is Ellie with underscores in between the words. Twitter is the same. Facebook is the Dream Girl Ellie, and then the International Superstars page. And then we have a Pro Wrestling Tees uh, website under uh, the international superstars and then we have eight by ten and pictures and everything if you wrestling just message buddies. yeah wrestling buddies and stickers and um we got all the merch a bunch of stuff if you just message one of us we can do that too and blanco oh lord I, one, one of these one of these days i'm gonna actually okay i remember stuff. this do you remember it all right, Twitter is Real Blanco Loco. Real Blanco Loco. <laughs> Instagram is the, uh, the yes. Blanco Loco. With uh, two E's. With two E's. And all the other social media is just kind of Blanco Loco stuff. Um, same with the International Superstars on Pro Wrestling Tees. We did get fresh new shirts and the fresh new design with the Pikachu and the Disney and all that other stuff, and we hope we don't get sued. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, Who knows? Uh, you never know. Disney loves it. Cease and desist. D Disney, with everything they have, they they they, they too occupy. Like, oh, come on, gotta help out, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so go check that out. It's interesting, you know. You bring up pro wrestling tees because I think as of tomorrow they're gonna have their fall sale. So I think twenty or twenty five percent off each order. Plenty of options to choose from. While you pick whatever, make sure you add the international superstars on there. Um, get that 25% yeah, off. Uh, the code is fall. So I'll, def I'll definitely be buying some merch as well. Um, not just the pro wrestling tees, but for y'all as well. I've been buying merch from wrestlers since this pandemic has started. And I will continue to do so for as long as I am financially able to. Um, so it was great chatting with you both. Y'all are very busy, and I appreciate y'all taking the time for this interview. Uh, continue success. Keep doing what y'all do. And uh, hopefully I'll I'll see y'all on a future show. Uh, Tennessee would probably be best for me right now. <laughs> so, uh, uh but uh, good luck to you both on everything. Keep doing your thing. Appreciate you.
Thank you. Of course, thank you. Thank all right, that was the International Superstars. I'm Kenny Cummings, concluding yet another edition of Triple Threat Western Radio. Check us out Thursdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on tmvcafe.com. Until then, be safe.